It's that time. It's Wednesday morning. Time for our Ask the Vet segment with our good friend, <laughs> with our good friend, Dr. With our good friend, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Merriweather. I know that. I know that. Good friend, Dr. Merriweather. I'm like, okay, it's coming. It's coming. The synapses are working. The synapses okay, are working. What day of the week is it? I, I know. You know, when you asked if I had Monday off, I'm like, did I have Monday off? No, I worked. Dr. Merriweather. <laughs> I was there. It was there. Uh, yeah, from, from All Creatures Veterinary Center, this is a 24-7 operation. Uh, Dr. Merriweather just got off work, by the yeah. way, the overnight. As you say, we, d- we always uh, seem to work the holidays or some, you seem to work all the major ones because pets do not know that it's Thanksgiving. As a matter of fact, it (laughs) seems like Thanksgiving or Christmas is when they decide to really make uh, some pet owners' lives miserable. Am I right? Right, yeah. I'm going to get into that. I'm going to get into that (laughs) turkey. All right. So uh, also don't forget Canyon Country Veterinary Hospital located on Soledad Canyon right next to Regal Cinemas. So uh, last week we had some phone callers. This week we have a, a, people are a little bit shy. I put the word out there, but I did get some emails, emails. from uh, a couple of people. So we want to talk about that. These are our listeners who are wanting to, uh, just a few little answers about their pets. Nothing too serious, because if it's something really serious, I would say, well, why don't you just take your pet down to... All Creatures Veterinary Center. But these are things that, more like habit issues. The first one is from uh, Amanda. And she says, uh, and she even wrote it this way, My cat has developed the annoying habit of, ahem, dragging his behind on the floor. He has all his shots and seems to be eating normally, but they haven't noticed anything unusual in his litter box. What could that possibly be attributed to if it's if maybe it's not a worm issue or maybe it is even if he's had his shots? Um, well, it could be kind of multiple things. You know, definitely if it's continuing, I would take it into the vet um, to be seen. Um, you know, there's kind of multiple issues that could be going on. You know, sometimes questions seem a lot more simple than they actually end up being. Um, you know, anything from, you know, a simple issue like uh, full anal glands to something more serious is certainly so, so there. cats need to be expressed too every now and then. Is that usually is that, not? Yeah. Um, you know, but especially if something's going on back there, um, it they could do, be something. They do have anal glands. So, okay, so. some sort of <laughs> blockage going on, something, and that's yeah. is is that is that how what happens with dogs too? Uh, usually, I know dogs definitely. Some dogs, I should say, need to be expressed. Yeah, yeah, especially um, little dogs in particular tend to be a little bit more prone to that. And is it just because they have smaller parts? Maybe. Okay. Or smaller poops. Yeah, so that's <laughs> and and uh, uh, try, in, in the most medical way possible, expression is just going in and clearing out the glands, as it were. Yeah, yeah. It, it actually all collects into like a little anal sac. And right. so it, that's usually what's causing discomfort if that gets too big. But there's definitely other things that could be going on. Mm. So getting them checked out is never a bad idea. I guess, from, abnormal. I guess from what I heard, you can actually express your own pets. But I'm here to tell you that is something I'd be willingly, I would willingly pay professional to do. because It's probably it's, uh, the stinkiest stuff. Yeah. That, that I would say your pet can produce and, and, most of the time. I and this bet. is coming <laughs> from a, a veterinary professional who deals probably with all kinds of different uh, levels of different olfactory, of <laughs> sensory. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty gross. Well. Yeah. So, but that's the thing. Do you, do you usually have like the um, the assistants do that, or is it? Uh, you know? <laughs> um, both of us do it. Okay, you that's know, very nice. Kind of whoever might have their finger in the area. Right. Is is the one doing finger it. on the pulse of the situation, <laughs> as it were. So. So and that's a that's a good thing to know because that is a lot of times if it's not a worm issue or some other health issue that that definitely you want to check first of all what are their habits right what are they are they acting normally are they are they doing something strange are they eating are they not eating are they and of course <clears throat> what's left behind yeah. and especially with cats too sometimes they will leave a message when they don't use the litter box right oh yes oh yes definitely if they are not using the litter box. Even for a short period of time, there could be something really serious. And that, that is sometimes can be behavioral, maybe if there's been a big change up, you know, especially. Behavioral the- too, um, but a lot of medical concerns can show up in that. And cats, cats can be kind of hard because they like to hide signs until kind of the last possible minute. I noticed that with, with cats when I've had them in the past, it's like you, because they won't just always do it out in public like that. They'll find a little place to hide it, but not in the litter box. And you're going, what? is that? And you realize later on it's been behind the couch for the last two weeks and, and 
they've Ooh. been hiding. <laughs> and that's always a tough thing, or maybe not two weeks, but you know. Yeah. But but that's always a tough thing because they are they're very yeah, and, and they'll hide being sick, which I yeah. think is the hardest one. It's it's so much easier if they would just tell us, Oh, I'm feeling a little unwell today instead of waiting until it, you know, gets And and sometimes serious. it's tough to tell because they will sleep a lot anyway. And so if you're not really watching them closely and and you think, oh, okay, yeah, they're just I mean like if you go to work and they were sleeping when you go to work and you come home and they're sleeping when you come home, you don't always like, get I don't to know see what you're doing all day. But yeah. you know, things like hiding, like sometimes, you know, sometimes I think it's like a language barrier. You know, they're they're showing us something, but it's not necessarily something that you know, really sticks out unless you know to look for it. But things like, you know, the cat hiding abnormally, you know, not being as friendly, you know, maybe not wanting to walk up the stairs like it normally would. And that's, not hanging out in its usual spots. Sometimes that it can be something as subtle as that. That was, uh, we had a cat, this is uh, quite a few years ago, that that was the case and we're looking all over for him. And he was an outside inside cat and we were looking all over for him. We couldn't find him. And, ev and eventually my other cat was like pawing on one of the kitchen cabinets and, and we saw him and he was way back in the kitchen cabinet. I mean, he's never been in there before. We mm -hmm. got him out and he had a big puncture wound like he had gotten in a fight mm -hmm. or gotten injured on the, on his front leg. And uh, that's true. And that is that also like with older sick animals in general, I noticed. It's, it's uh, cats that aren't feeling well. So either, you know, not feeling well, you know, because, you know, they're fighting off an infection or something like that. Or even like something like a painful cat will hide yeah, oftentimes rather than tell you, this hurts, this yeah. hurts. They'll be like, they, I'm they, just going to hide over here in the corner. Understandably, maybe they don't necessarily want to be um, treated by. They, they don't know that we're they trying to make them to better. The they just think we're messing with <laughs> Uh, we are speaking with Dr. Merriweather from All Creatures Veterinary Center. It's a 24-7 veterinary clinic located on Lyons Avenue in Newhall. And they are also uh, partnered, affiliated with, uh, uh, in conjunction with, also have the Canyon Country Veterinary Hospital, which is not 24-7, but is located right next to the Regal Cinema on yep, Solid Canyon Road. They're family veterinarian. We'll be right back with a dog question right after this. You ain't nothing but a hound dog and we are back with our Ask the Vet, Ask the Doc segment with Dr. Merriweather from All <laughs> Creatures Veterinary Center. It's a 24-7 operation. It's a family practice uh, it, that works in, in partnership with the Candy Country Veterinary Hospital, which is located on Soledad Canyon uh, next to Regal Cinema. And, of course, uh, All Creatures located on Lyons Avenue in the wonderful Victorian building. That uh, is so nice, actually, to have that there. And I remember what, what the the building, the business that used to be before. You guys have done a really great transformation. That used to be a coffee house, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, did they leave behind a cappuccino machine or anything like that? No, by any chance? That would be amazing if they had. But yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> but it really is because of that, though. The digs are really nice, and I think, like I said, I yeah. think my dog thinks he's visiting a house. You know, because he always comes in there and wants to go upstairs, and it's like, no, 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 we got to stay down here. But uh, especially, I love the facility you have there because it's state of the art stuff. And yeah. if you don't have it there, you've got it at Candy Country. If you don't have it there, you've got it out in Lancaster, right? So full yeah, service, we, we, no matter what you got, guys. We've got a few locations. And Dr. Sandu, who has uh, performed uh, successful, um, uh, um, help me out here, again, with the stem cell, <laughs> uh, uh, stem cell treatments that have actually treated inflammation and arthritis, has done amazing things yeah, for the yeah, animals. Yeah, we, we can do some stem cell therapy. Which so is whatever you want. See, it's all coming to me. It must be, it's, it's, my days are thrown off because of the holiday, even though I worked on Monday, <laughs> I still think it's, I don't know what day it is. So we had uh, an email, people are emailing this week, they called last week, but they just had some emails. We talked about uh, cats in our last mm -hmm. segment. This time there's a dog, uh, this is from Logan. I have a beagle who, whose ears always seem to bo be bothering him, no matter what we do to try and keep them clean. And, uh, uh, but uh, they occasionally bother him. We could tell, by the way, he constantly flaps his ears or rubs them on the carpet or couch. Is this a sign of something more serious? So, could be, definitely. Um, you know, kind of, ear problems can be difficult, you know, because definitely there are some breeds that are kind of predisposed towards issues. Um, and then there are actually like other conditions that can make a dog more likely to develop ear problems, um, and like ear infections and whatnot. And so, you know, definitely, you know, with the, you know, kind of with the repeat offenders, if you were like having them worked up for other possible, like kind of underlying causes that are making them more susceptible is always a good idea. Um, but definitely, you know, any, 
you know, any any dog that's, you know, rubbing its ears frequently or starts shaking its head should have its ears checked out. Okay. And that's, uh, as far as cleaning goes, you never want to use Q-tips or jab Q-tips yeah. in. Is it just, do you want to use, like, the like put the cleaner in and kind of wash, roll their ear the around? Massage. Like the massage. <laughs> the massage and then let them kind of shake it out and do their thing, right? That's, yeah. Because uh, I know that I've tried those little, those, you know, those little um, scooper things or what am I thinking of the where you stick the suction, the suction thing. thing it doesn't seem to work very well no matter what I do and I don't know if his little e- it, his little ear canals are too tiny or, or what the deal is but that's I know that's one it way it can be hard treatment. you know especially if, if they have like kind of chronic ear issues the canal can actually get really really ouchy inflamed and narrowed eventually so sometimes that can also be part of it so what do we look for when we're seeing like an inflammation or possible ear infection then you know so anything like a a smelly ear you know definitely if they start head shaking or rubbing their ears or their ears are painful so some dogs like they don't want you to touch their ears you know it's and it's the the whole kind of local inflammatory process you know where things get swollen things get red and inflamed just like us and yeah it's like us. So yeah. uh, any other, I mean, aside from just cleaner, you don't want to try anything like my mother had the old remedy whenever we had an ear infection of heating up olive oil. No, you don't want to no, do anything like that. Okay. Definitely this is kind of a, a take it to the vet and, and get right. it checked out. No home remedies, nothing that grandma did, no yeah, nothing uh, that know, might make it worse. hot mustard <laughs> plaster or anything like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a good thing. I hope that that answered uh, Amanda and Logan's questions. Uh, so that is, that is good. And just overall general health whenever, like I said, when we talked about dogs and cats and their behavior and just knowing knowing how well they knowing their habits and knowing when they're they're different right is the yeah yeah but, but probably a pretty good point that they brought up is you know if if the if your dog is seems more susceptible to ear infections like they're having multiples of them there there sometimes can be underlying diseases something even that's even more making serious. them more susceptible okay and so it's it's a good thing to bring up and, so, and, and that could that could lead to I mean just like in humans where it could lead to other uh, yeah. more serious problems okay yeah. good to know so if nothing else take your pet to all Creatures Veterinary Center or Canyon Always Country Veterinary advice. Hospital. <laughs> Just to, I mean, and it's the thing is that a lot of people want to see first, is it something, how serious is it? And then from there, but it's always good to, to check that out. Dr. Merriweather, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks Again, from All me. Creatures Veterinary Center located on Lyons Avenue. They are also uh, partnered with Canyon Country Veterinary Hospital located on Soledad next to Regal Cinemas.